Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I thank the Lord for being here today and for all of our visitors that we have out with us. We certainly appreciate you being here. Know that you can be somewhere else. And we're grateful that you chose to come and worship the Lord with us this morning. And just as a side note, uh, and it's something that I really don't do, but I just feel compelled this morning. We're so glad to have Cecilia back with us. Welcome home. We've been gone for a while, and not even in our country, but I'm, I'm sure she's made some memories that'll last a long, long time, the rest of her life. Amen. Just glad that she came back. <clears throat> hint, hint, hint. So stay, stay here. Oh, y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Just, just tell her. Glad you're back home. Amen. Amen. If you open your Bibles to the book of Philippians, you know, Jesus said, and a child shall lead them. She's saying amen. What y'all doing? (laughs) In the book of Philippians, chapter number two. ask for your patience this morning with me. I'll treat a little bit. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 21 says, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And we'll just stop right there. And I would like to speak from the subject of what are you seeking after? The Apostle Paul was a founder of many of our New Testament churches that we have and he dealt with a lot of the issues that came about from people going from an old way of doing things to a new way of doing things. We see a lot of that oftentimes with people who first get the Holy Ghost and have never been around church or have been around other churches that do things differently. And there is a learning curve that goes along with the newness of life, as the Bible calls it. There is a period of time that it takes to find out what God is expecting from us. And if we are not careful, as older people, we can become mean and harsh to young folks that just get saved or to old folks that just get saved or to middle-aged folks that just get saved and are trying to figure their way out. But I've never seen a parent that gets frustrated with their child trying to learn how to walk and tell them you ought to know how to do it by now. You've been trying for a few months. I've never heard any parent do that. And just like a child learning to walk, there is a way for God's people to learn how to walk in the newness of life. And it takes some time. There's some stumbling and falling that takes place. But it takes time. I hope hope the older folks that's been saved for a while is catching on to that. Quit beating up on the younger folks. Let, let, Let them learn how to walk. It takes time for a child to learn how to talk. They say words wrong. Sometimes they mispronounce the right word. Sometimes they say it in the wrong context. But it takes them some time to learn how to talk. Now, if I can say it this way, it's not good parenting when your baby is baby talking and you baby talking back with them. All you're doing is reinforcing bad talking. When a child is mispronouncing a word and you think it's cute, so you start mispronouncing it with them, 
You're just teaching them how to mispronounce a word. That's all. But now there's the same kind of a connection in our spiritual walk. When you see somebody that's newly saved and they kind of say something out of order and you think it's cute and you just want to keep on bringing it up and how funny it was, they think that it's cute. Right, right. So we have to be careful in that way also. Okay. Not to beat them up, but don't encourage them to keep doing wrong either. Amen. All right, I'm through with saints meeting. Paul had to deal with all of that because it was all new. But it's not something that's new to the human condition. It's not something new to people. I'm not just talking about the things that have captured our imagination. We have computers that we can do more with now than we have ever been able to do in human history. We have access to information that's unprecedented in human history. I was just talking to one of the young saints the other day about how we used to have to go to the library and research. If you wanted to find something, you had to go and know what it was, and they had all these different card catalogs, shelves of card catalogs, for different ways for you to hunt up something. And then once you found it, you had to know the Dewey Decimal System and go to the right bookshelf, the right rack, and then find the right book number by decimal point. You had to find that. Then once you got the book, you had to start researching in the book to find what you were looking for. But now we just pull our phone out of our pocket and Google it. And you can get the right answer along with a thousand other wrong answers. But information is there. Smartphones. We, we can be so distracted with our phones, it just go into a sit-down restaurant and look at the tables. You see folks sitting around. They ain't talking to each other. They're sitting and texting. They, they're looking up stuff. They're, we, have, we have kind of dummied down human relationships. Sometimes I'm sitting at home on the couch reading or watching something on the television, and a text message would come in is from my wife, and she's sitting right by me. All right, I'll move on. We have smart TVs today where it doesn't play just television. It'll go on the internet and look up programming for you. You can get YouTube and Hulu and any host of other programming that has television shows or movies on it that you would normally have to wait for the broadcaster to bring to you. Now you can go out and get it your own self. Kind of TV a la carte. Just pick what you want and you can watch it. I remember when it was four channels, 16, 22, 28, and 34. And I remember when 34 came on the air. Ooh, look, look, the older saints ain't saying nothing. Y'all left me hanging out there. But I remember it. I remember the first time when it first come on the air and Sesame Street was on 34. Yeah, that was a long time ago. But at the end of the day, 11, 12 o'clock at night, they would play the national anthem. They would give St. Christopher's prayer, and, they, and then it went static. If you were still up after that, you had best be reading something or talking with somebody on the telephone or go to bed. That was, that was our options. But now you can go and get anything you want, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can get anything you want and watch it. We have comfortable cars now. There was a time when having a car that had air conditioning in it was a novelty. You would have to go out for a ride and roll your windows down if you wanted to cool off on a hot summer day. But now we have comfortable cars. The seats in them would heat for the winter time. They'll cool you off now. 
Cars that will tell you when somebody's getting too close. Set your cruise control on, and it'll keep you a certain distance from other cars in front of you. You don't even have to think about it anymore. They practically drive themselves. Our houses are a lot nicer than they used to be. But these aren't the things that the Apostle Paul is talking about. He's dealing with human nature. We have distractions today. But that's not human nature. That's something that causes us to drift away from the things of God if we're not careful. But Paul is dealing with something a little more serious than that. He's dealing with the selfishness of humanity. Yeah. Parents have to teach their children to share. Yeah. That's why people get so excited when they see a child offer something to someone else without it being prompted. We appraise them highly for that. We tell them, oh, you're so generous. Oh, and you thought about your brother. You thought about your sister. And we're so happy that they did that without having to be told to do it. Why? Because we know that people, even children, are selfish by nature. It's not just children, though. When Jesus was talking with his disciples and telling them that he was about to die, they were having an argument over who was going to be the most important in the kingdom. That's something I, that I struggled to get my mind wrapped around. Jesus is here telling you I'm about to suffer and die, but we fighting over who's going to be the most important afterwards. That is the ultimate in selfishness. I'm not worried about someone that's about to suffer. I'm worried about what I'm going to gain from it. You know, some folks are like that, though. Grandma's dying or auntie's dying, and they over there serving them tea and trying to be as sweet as they can, and in the back of their mind, they're counting up all the different things they're going to do with the money they're about to get after they die. Some folks are like that. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, this is the Apostle Paul also, in verse 24, he said, Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Yeah, we got to get to the point to where we stop looking out for me and start looking out for somebody else. But it seems like the more we have, the less we want to help other people. The more God gives us, the less we want to share. We have so much, and we are so greedy. If somebody gives you $10, it's nothing for you to say, let's go down to McDonald's, and we'll split it. You get a meal, and I'll get a meal. Burger King or some place where there's some fast food, you know, $10, that's nothing. But let somebody give you 100 and we kind of care, I don't know, I got some other bills I need to pay, but I'll get you a drink. Get a $1,000, and we won't even let nobody know that we got some money because we're scared they'll ask us for a few bucks. The more we get, the more stingy we become. The Bible says that the more we have, the less we love. Put it like this, and because iniquity shall abound. The word abound means to go above and beyond, to have in abundance. Because iniquity or because people want to do wrong, since folks are doing wrong and doing it in abundance, he said the love of many is waxing cold. It's not something that you see right away. It's not something extraordinarily quick. It's waxing means a layer at a time, just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time until it starts to build up. Our love is starting to dwindle because we have so much. We don't visit folks like we used to because we've got so much to entertain ourselves with. We don't want to share with anybody because of how much we have. We want to look out for others. What are you seeking after? What are you looking for? 
Is my time with God spent only in what I can get from God? Why are y'all so quiet? Is my prayer life about what I can gain? I heard a long time ago uh, there was this thing about the selfish man's prayer. And he was, Lord, bless me and my wife, my son and his wife. Us four and no more. That's, that's the selfish man's prayer. That's the person that's only looking out for themselves. And what he's talking about here is not dealing with our money. He's not talking about going out and giving all your stuff away to everybody. It's not scriptural. There was a man in the Bible that Jesus told, if you want to have eternal life, Take everything that you have and sell it and give it to the poor. And you got some folks that think that that's what God is looking for, for all of his people to just be poor people. But that's not what he was talking about. This was a man that had a problem with greed. He was selfish. And so Jesus said, if you want to be right then, learn how to share. Take what you got, sell it, and give your money to the poor. And the man walked away sorrowful. But it's not like that for everybody. Some folks it is... Get over yourself and start treating other people nice. Amen. Amen. All right. I, I'll, Amen. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that alone too. In St. John chapter 7, Jesus said this in verse 16, and Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. People ought to be able to know when what you're talking about is of God or it's about you. And be careful because just because somebody's talking about God doesn't mean they're talking about God. He said, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. That's what some folks is doing. There's some preachers who only talk about God so they can look good. All right, I'll say that one again. That bears repeating. There are some preachers who only talk about God because it makes them look so good, makes them look spiritual, makes them look important, but ain't got nothing to do with God at all. You can find some folks in the street that can quote more Bible than you can quote, but that doesn't mean that they know more about God than you know. Jesus said, my doctrine. See, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. What is it that you're talking about? When someone is in need of help, what are we giving them? The doctrine of God or the doctrine of men? What are we seeking? Are we seeking our own? Some folks, when they give advice, their advice is all based on something that's going to make me look good. And how can I say this in a way so that they'll go back and tell others? It was me that told him that. You know, David told him uh, so and so and so. He, he is so smart. But that shouldn't be the, the scope of, of our advice. When I'm not doing my will, but the will of God, that's when I'm not seeking my own. What am I seeking? My own glory or the glory of God? I just want to leave this with us. I'm finished. I just want to leave this with us. Good. It's time for us to stop looking out after me. Good. The Bible tells us to not seek the things of this world. He, he tells us that if we seek first the kingdom of God, everything else will be added Amen. unto me. Amen. When I seek to do what God wants, everything else will fall into place. God does things so different than we do that we can't even begin to imagine how he will work it out. That's why twice the apostles, twice when Jesus asked them, what do we have to, to feed the people with? Both times they thought that he was rebuking them. They didn't realize that Jesus was about to do a miracle. They didn't understand that by breaking in pieces what they brought to him, he was going to multiply and make more of it. There are times in our lives 
when what seeking God looks like is wrong, so we seek our own. Here's the common saying of those that seek their own. Couldn't help myself. The person that's seeking their own will often say things like, well, you know, had they not done that to me first, if they would have just left me alone, they know what kind of temper I have. My family ought to know me by now. My co-workers ought to know, don't mess with me first thing in the morning. My children ought to know when I walk in the door from work, don't just come up and start barraging me with a bunch of questions. They know better than that. See, we'll say things like that because we're not seeking our, uh, after the affairs of others. We're seeking our own. Hey, Amen. I, I, I know. Because I've been up that road. When you get to the point to where you're seeking after the affairs of others, God will begin to add things into your life. The things that you thought you couldn't do without, sometimes he'll let you do without it and show you that you can do just fine without it. You might get your cable TV cut off, but you'll find out that television ain't that interesting anyway. I used to sit and watch television all the time. That was my thing. I enjoy watching TV. Now I turn it on, and if there's not a documentary that I'm interested in, I turn it off because it's just not interesting at all. Everything seems to be in a cycle now. It's in a, this, this, this loop. But you will find out there are things that you don't need that you thought you needed. You thought you needed a brand new car, but you can make it by with a hoopty just a little bit longer. I'm not just saying that to try and encourage you to not have something. What I want us to understand is, what is it that you're looking for? Right, right, right. If you're always looking to take care of you, you will always have nothing. nothing. There are just some things that doesn't seem to make sense. You know, we want to jump into stuff that's not our affairs. And yet the Bible tells us that a man, I, I can't quote it exactly, it's in the book of Proverbs, where he talks about how if you meddle in an argument that had nothing to do with you passing by and you meddle with it, it's like grabbing a dog by his ears. Does anybody grab the dog by his ears? Go ahead and try it once and see what happens. Just grab Nice dog, too. Just grab him by his ears and start pulling him and see what happens. Oh, yeah, they'll get you. They'll get you real good. There are some things in the Bible, if we just took the time to read, could help our lives so much. Mm -hmm. Then you don't come back saying, I was only trying to help. They jumped on me. I was only trying to help. Does that make sense, y'all? Yeah. That's why police officers don't like to go to cause of domestic violence, because they know once they step in, they're liable to get jumped on by both people. Because right. Right. Mm -hmm. you're meddling in something that you didn't start. All right. What are you seeking after? We should start seeking after the things of God. And leave the other stuff alone. You don't need it that bad. Amen. All right. I told you, short. I'm going to preach. Teach a little bit this morning and not preach. Amen. Stand on your feet.